The S Plus is yet another budget smartphone from Xiaomi. It sells for about 15 to 16 thousand rupees in India, and it is rebranded as the Blue Vivo XL in the American region with a few minor changes. So, is this phone worth buying? Let's find out. Pick up the Xiaomi S Plus, and you will instantly notice that it is a cheap device. The phone is mostly made out of plastic, and the glossy back cover, which gets scratched easily. is a huge fingerprint magnet and it reminds me of the old samsung devices the back cover can be removed to access two 4g sim card slots a micro sd card slot and a replaceable 3150 mah battery the back cover also has a textured pattern to it if you look closely and the phone is available with a few color options the front of the phone has a 5 megapixel front facing camera followed by a 5.5 inch 720p AMOLED display and three capacitive buttons. The bottom of the phone houses a USB type C port, so it's good to see Xiaomi shifting towards the type C standard. The phone feels very light in the hand, and while the build quality is decent, I have seen better smartphones from Xiaomi. So while the S Plus does not score that well in the build quality department, it makes up for it in the performance. The S Plus and the Blue Vivo XL are powered by the MediaTek 6753 octa-core CPU. The S Plus gets 3 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the XL only has 2 gigs. Apart from that, these phones are very much the same on the inside. The octa-core CPU performed amazingly well in day-to-day -day tasks. The S Plus was very fluid and smooth while I was using it, and it even managed to play heavy games like Nova 3 without any issues. This is because the phone has a 720p display which in turn reduces the load on the CPU and GPU because there are less pixels to push. The 3 gigabytes of RAM managed multitasking with ease and while the Blue Vivo XL gets only 2 gigabytes of RAM the performance should be very close to the Xiaomi S Plus. The Amigo UI which powers this phone is based on Android 5.1 Lollipop and it is a great UI when it comes to performance. The phone felt very responsive and swift throughout my usage and overall I was very impressed with how this phone performed. My only gripe with the Amigo UI is that it somehow manages to remove instant messaging apps like WhatsApp out of the memory and I would not get my messages until I reopened the app manually. This issue was much less on this phone compared to the one on the Xiaomi S7 but it is still there. and i have all the power saving modes disabled so i feel that it is an inherent fault of the amigo ui if you'd like to know more about the amigo ui you can check out my review of the geoni s7 which is linked in the video's description moving on to the camera of the geoni s plus i'm going to say that it's just average the 13 megapixel sensor can click some good photos when the lighting is good But once you enter into indoor or dimly lit conditions, it starts to show its weaknesses. The photos are in general good for sharing on the social media pages, but if you are looking to click some seriously amazing photos, you should look elsewhere. The phone has a 5.5 inch 720p AMOLED display with a pixel density of 267. So it's definitely not the sharpest display, but it is not that bad either. The viewing angles are very impressive and the color reproduction on the AMOLED display is also very good. While I do miss a 1080p display, the everyday performance as well as the battery life gains from that 720p display cannot be ignored. Speaking of battery life, The Xiaomi S Plus did do a great job at it. I could easily get around 4 to 4 and a half hours of screen on time on Wi-Fi and 4G during a typical 14 to 15 hour work day. Once I was completely on 4G for about 18 to 20 hours and I still managed a decent 3 and a half hours of screen on time, which is very impressive according to my usage considering my S6 which would have definitely required a top up charge in between. The network reception was also good and this phone does support dual SIM cards and 4G networks. Xiaomi also bundles quite a bit of accessories with the S Plus and the in-ear earphones that come with it are quite good. 
so the S Plus overall strikes a very positive impression as a budget smartphone until you start considering its pricing and the rivals. With a price tag of fifteen thousand rupees in India, it is quite difficult to recommend this phone as you can get the One Plus X for that price, which offers a lot more. Then again, there are phones like the Ali One S, Honor Five X, and the Xiaomi Redmi Note Three, which offer much more for a much lesser price. But if you are in the US, then the Blue Vivo XL can be an option for you because it is only available for one fifty dollars unlocked, and it is essentially the same phone with the exception of having two gigabytes of RAM. So this concludes my review of the Xiaomi S Plus or the Blue Vivo XL. Do let me know your thoughts and queries about this phone in the comments and please don't forget to like this video. As always do subscribe for more upcoming reviews. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.